Europe is home to a vast array of landscapes and a vast array of interesting creatures. But unfortunately, just like all the other continents on this earth, it's also home to some invasive species. Along with these invasive species, there are also introduced species, which sometimes have little to no impact on an ecosystem, mainly due to them having such a small population. In this video, I will be focusing on both invasive and introduced species, as I'll be going through five species that definitely don't belong in Europe. And for our first species, we'll be making the short trip over to the Americas, as we have the white-tailed deer. Now, the white-tailed deer is the most common deer species in North America, and about a third of them live in the state of Texas. It's thought that there are more white-tailed deer in Texas than there are people in Ireland. Despite mostly being known as a North American species, they can also be found in Central America and even in some parts of Bolivia. Unlike some species of deer that are sometimes found in herds, white-tailed deer are mostly seen as solitary creatures. They tend to live alone, especially in the summer months, and males and females only interact during the mating season. Throughout the seasons, this deer's coat changes colours from a reddish summer coat into a faded grey winter coat. The fawns tend to have spots markings on their body, and Disney's Bambi was modelled after a white-tailed deer. Only male white-tailed deer grow antlers, and these deer do surprisingly well in captivity. Wild white-tailed deer tend to live up to six years old in the wild, whereas in captivity they can live to up to 20 years. Like many other deer, the white-tailed deer is a very athletic species, being able to jump very high and run at speeds of up to 30 miles per hour. Rather surprisingly, these deer aren't only found in the Americas, as there is a small population in the Czech Republic. <coughs> They were introduced here in the 1840s, but the reason behind this is unknown. The Czech Republic is a great place for deer, with around 33% of its area being made up by woodlands. Luckily, this deer's population in Europe is still quite small, and is estimated to be around a thousand individuals or less. Of course, Europe has quite a few native species of deer, and if this white-tailed deer population was to grow any larger, they would compete with the native deer, and possibly have a negative impact on their numbers. But for our next species, we'll be heading to the western United States, as we have the California king snake. Now, this species of snake is known for being very adaptable, and although it has very striking markings, this species is non-venomous. It tends to constrict its prey, which can come in the form of rodents, birds, reptiles, amphibians, and even other snakes. In fact, the king in their name refers to their behaviour of hunting other snakes, and they will even target very dangerous prey such as rattlesnakes. In fact, they're even known to have a tolerance to rattlesnake venom, which makes them perfectly adapted rattlesnake killers. Because of this predatory behaviour, many people see them as a positive species to have around, as they're very good at controlling rodent and venomous snake numbers. Now, in my opinion, this snake is the most interesting inclusion on this list, but it might also be the most controversial. This is because this snake isn't invasive in continental Europe, but it is invasive over a European territory. It's found on the island of Gran Canaria, which is technically an island in Spain, but it is off the coast of northwestern Africa. As you can imagine, this snake got to this island through the pet trade, and then irresponsible owners released them into the wild. These snakes are now classed as invasive on the island, and there's something rather strange about these invasive of snakes. Now when it comes to reptiles and fish in the pet trade, albino specimens are very popular. This is when an individual lacks a certain pigmentation, and they often appear white. Albino California king snakes are very popular in the pet trade, and most of the invasive snakes on Gran Canaria are actually albino California king snakes. It's been decades since they were first introduced into the island, but so far over 2,000 snakes have been captured. They've had a massive negative impact on the island's ecosystem, as they've decimated the local lizard, bird, and mammal populations. So even though these snakes make great pets, they really don't belong in the Canary Islands. But for our next species, we'll be heading to South America, as we have the Chilean Flamingo. Now, the Chilean Flamingo is smaller and paler than most of its relatives, and is accustomed to a more temperate climate. They can be found in the high-altitude lakes in the Andes, where they spend most of their day filtering out small animals from the water. In fact, flamingos get most of their pink colouring from the food that they eat, and this is the same pigment that makes carrots orange. Of course, this bird's colouring is very striking, but so are its very long legs. What looks like their knee isn't their knee, and is actually their ankle. Their actual knee is much higher, and is hidden underneath their feathers. Unfortunately, this bird is listed as near-threatened, with its numbers decreasing in the past 50 years. This is due to a whole host of factors, with habitat destruction and hunting being just a few. Luckily for this bird, there are many captive breeding projects, and the first flamingo hatched in a European zoo was a Chilean flamingo in Switzerland in 1958. Surprisingly, these birds aren't only in captivity in Europe, as there's actually a very small wild population. It's unknown how or when exactly
quickly these birds were introduced. But there is a very small population in the Netherlands. Sightings of these birds are very rare, but they always tend to cause a stir. When they are spotted, they are often in the company of greater flamingos, which can be found in southern Europe. So of all the species on this list, the Chilean flamingo is probably the most popular. But for our next species, we'll be heading over to sub-Saharan Africa, as we have the village weaver. Now these birds tend to forage and roost in large groups, often with other weaver species. They search the vegetation and trees for food, which in most cases comes in the form of seeds, fruits and insects. As you can guess from this bird's name, they are very talented weavers. They are able to build extraordinary structures, which sometimes look like a grass cage. To be able to build these structures, they have some very impressive skills, and weavers are thought to be the only birds able to tie knots. These nests are often constructed next to other weaver birds' nests, and it might not be a great idea to live next to these birds. Village weavers have a remarkable song, usually made up of a jumble of squeaks and chirps. But surprisingly, as well as sub-Saharan Africa, these birds can also be found in southern Portugal. It's unknown how these birds made it here, but as they're such attractive birds, it's thought that they could have been escaped pets. They still have a relatively small population in the area, but they have been sighted near Lisbon. They could have a negative effect on the ecosystem by competing with other birds, but as they have such a small population, they haven't had a noticeable effect yet. And even though they don't belong there, they are a very beautiful bird to have around. But for our final species, we'll be heading back over to North America, as we have the North American beaver. Now beavers are very iconic North American animals and are one of the world's most interesting rodents. They are one of the few animals that modify their habitat by felling trees and building dams. To help take down these trees they have very strong orange teeth and this orange colour comes from an iron rich protective coating of enamel. Their strange tails help them move through the water and they're also used to slap the water when the beaver notices a threat. Now if this animal is on this list, it means that it has a population in Europe. For some of you this may be confusing, because as I'm sure many of you know, Europe also has its own species of beaver. The Eurasian beaver is the only other extant species of beaver, and is very similar in appearance to the North American beaver. The Eurasian beaver is slightly smaller on average, but the Eurasian beaver has a larger, squarer head. The North American beaver is not widespread across Europe, but it was introduced into parts of Finland and Russia in the 1930s. The reasoning behind this is quite complicated because some believe it to be intentional, but others believe it to be a mistake. At the time, the taxonomical status of beaver from both continents was still in question. Some thought that they were the same species, or that one was a subspecies of the other. At the same time, Eurasian beavers were being reintroduced into Finland, and as some people believed that the American beaver was the same as the Eurasian beaver, American beavers were also introduced. Later on, of course, it was realised that these were two different species, and now both of these beavers can be found in some parts of Finland and Russia. In fact, the North American beaver beavers outnumber the Eurasian beavers in Finland, but hopefully in the future, these Eurasian beavers will be able to fight back. Now of course there are plenty of other animals that could have made it on this list, but I'm more than happy to do a part 2, and if you know of any other creatures that could have made it on this list, then let me know down in the comments below. But thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed, if you liked it please leave a like, and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these, but until next time, goodbye.